doing extreme stunts. I love doing extreme stunts. I do the whole Hollywood style stunts, and I also do the whole underground, homegrown style stunts where it's just me and a couple of my buddies with a video camera. Get it, get it. You know, most people like look at me and be like, okay, why is this kid in spiky hair kicking in a car window? What an idiot. How dumb is he? You know what? I'm not that dumb, actually. I'm pretty freaking smart. I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? Because this is what makes me happy. I get scared all the time. Like, if I wasn't scared, I wouldn't want to do it. And there's always going to be stunts that aren't successful. One of my more petty stunts that uh, ended up like being my worst injuries was a backflip off a vending machine. I do the backflip and I landed right on my face and um, it was bad. Okay, well Mike is here with his mother Sharon who was at his hospital bedside just after that vending machine stunt went horribly wrong. Tell me about this vending machine stunt. What, where does this come from? How, what's your thinking here? Uh, so I was kicking at the mall and some guy's like, hey, you wanna do back from a vending machine? I was like, sure, why not? You know? And uh, I did it and it landed on my face. <laughs> yeah. It sucked for a quick second. I was like, why am I doing this, you know? I was thinking like that. But then, because I was in that state of mind, you know, my mind wasn't right, but then once I got, like, my thoughts back and I collected my thoughts. Yeah, so, what, what do you think about it? <laughs> Every time I happen to see a clip, and I believe me, I'm sure there's plenty I haven't seen, it's like my blood runs cold. I don't know what to say to him to change it. But I'm still here today, smiling. That's all that matters. I'm still happy, you know, smiling. Really? I'm smiling. I'm happy. I'm healthy. Uh, Michael's very concerned about his looks, and I'm always telling him that if you're that concerned about your looks, why would you go and try to hurt yourself and ruin the looks that you're so happy about having? What is it that lights you up about this? What, what is it that you're so proud of here? I'd say 80% for the adrenaline rush, 10% um, for video cameras, and 10% for chicks. This is a turn also, on for girls. They they like this. Yeah, they just think it's cool. I, you know, it's like kind of because they know. say now, boy, that's who I'd like to be the father of my children. <laughs> uh, this is this is what I'm looking for. This is this is the guy. Well, they see me do stunts. You know, it's like that whole American badass thing. You know, like wow, dude, I want a bad boy. You know, and then they see me modeling, so they see the two and two, and then I'm like. Wow, you know, they want me. So yeah, I don't have a problem getting girls, you know. If you had children, would you would you want them to do this? Uh, I'm not flipping gonna... off of a vending machine or yeah, alley? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't I don't encourage, you know, little kids to do this. I'm not trying no, to no, like... you know you do because you sell these, you put them out there for people to see and that causes them to emulate that. Well then again, so does Jackie Chan in his movies, you know, like Jackass, Johnny Knoxville. The whole world knows about that, you know? So it's like just because I stop, it's not gonna Kids are still gonna do it. So know? is like Knoxville your hero? No, I, I mean, I look, he's a good guy. You know, I watched his stunts when I was younger because like Jackass came out, I was like, you know, 13 years old or something, you know? So I'd always like be like, wow, they could do it, you know? Like they could make a living off it, you know? So can other people. That's how I looked at it. So what are you contributing to society? What are you adding to the world? Adding this. <sighs> You're just pretty proud of the way you turned out. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I thank her for that, you know. I thank, I mean... So what do, you, what do you think about this? He believes he's invincible. He thinks he can't get seriously injured or permanently injured or die. And I think that as he might not want to hear this, as he matures, that maybe he will slow down and understand that he's hurting himself. Yeah. I told him by the time he's 30, he'll be in a wheelchair. Your bones cannot take that kind of... Uh, and you're an EMT, out. right? Yes. So you understand how ugly it can get. And I tried to get them to understand. I was at a motor vehicle accident, and Michael came to me and said, there's a young man laying on the side of the road, and he's not moving. Could you help him? And I went out, and he was dead. And I brought Michael back out, and I brought my other two children out to see that your life can change in a split second. And I let them look at the dead person who was a uh, driving drunk. Right. 
Chong and John. There you go. And yours is self inflicted. You have your your self I don't drink and drive. I do stunts. You know that's like you know, I, I'm not putting that drinking that when you showed me that right. The guy was drunk driving and stuff, and I mean he's putting other people in danger. And you're flipping off of a vending machine in an alley. Well, that that stunt particular, yeah, I'm not a fan of it. Like it's a, it's a petty stunt. You know, it's something stupid. I mean, that was the second time you saw it. I, I'm not going to do it a third time. Like, I'd rather get hurt doing something epic, you know, jumping out of a helicopter on fire through rings and glass and make it like an epic. And why don't stunt. you get some training and become a stuntman? I do both. I, I mean, I got the whole Hollywood stunt thing going on, and I also do the underground stunts. It's like, it's your body. It's you and your body doing it. You yeah, feel okay. me? No, thank Probably you. not. <laughs> no, I'm going to take a pass on that. The doctors, and he's the author of a new book called The Doctor Is In. Uh, Travis, the doctor needs to be in here. Uh, help me out here. One of the things I say in my book is think like an ER doctor, and you guys are not thinking like an ER doctor. I'm going to guarantee you that. But here's the problem. Number one, you both think you're professionals. You're not. You're probably lucky, Seth, that you actually all you did was hit your head and open up a wound, because if you had actually surfed, on that car, behind the car, what would have happened could have been much worse. Because I'm here to tell you guys, and I know you're not going to listen because you've both been hurt and walked away. I take care of the people who don't walk away. I take care of the kids who fall, hit their head, and are paralyzed from their neck down for the rest of their lives. Who can never move their hand, never move their leg ever again. Or worse yet, it's not dying. It's having a head injury so very bad that you dribble out of your mouth the rest of your life. You can't speak. You can't feed yourself. And then your mothers have to spend the rest of their lives feeding you. It's not what you want, because every time what happens, and Dr. Phil, we've, we've talked about this with concussions. In fact, we have a graphic for this, because I want, I, I know you guys, this may not make any difference for you guys at all, because you already have them, apparently. Um, but walk us through, a, so people know what happens with a concussion. Well, your, your brain lives in an encasing, which is the skull. The skull doesn't move, but what does happen every time you hit your head, like you see in that animation, is the brain moves in the skull, you're damaging nerve cells, you can break open blood vessels, have massive, massive head bleeds. Yeah. Every time you have a, a concussion, you put yourself at risk. Later on, you're going to have memory loss, dementia, all sorts of things you don't want to have when you're 50 years old. And I don't like getting hurt, you know, like, I mean, this, this makes me happy, you know, it's like a drug, stunts is like a drug to me, you know, it's my cocaine. I need to do it to live, you know? I need that adrenaline rush to live, and I try to take safety precaution. Yeah, I might not be professional when I do these underground stunts, but I'm taking safety precaution. Yeah, we saw the safety precautions on the vending machine. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, in order to be older and wise, you gotta first be young and stupid. I mean... I don't really young stuff. anymore, though. Listen, it's very glib, and it's kind of cute to say, and it kind of rolls right off your tongue and stuff. It's true, though, but... but no, it's not true. It's stupid. Now, do you understand... <laughs> oh, listen. Listen. Young, young and less stupid. Less stupid. Okay, and listen. I'm going home today whether you do stunts or not. I, right. I mean, do you understand that if you do these things and you wind up being a quadriplegic, I can't tell you how many times... I've talked to people that have been in that situation that sit in a wheelchair and they can't move anything except their neck and they're telling me, yeah, I was really smart. I really was macho. I really thought I was invincible. And now I'm going to spend the next 60 years strapped in this wheelchair so you can get an adrenaline rush. I mean, is, it, is the risk-reward ratio really worth it? But you can go both ways with that. Like driving a car, you can get in a wreck. And if you get in a wreck and people show you that, is that saying you shouldn't drive cars? You are going out and purposely putting yourself in harm's way without training, without skills, just your basic skill set is that you have a disregard for consequences. That's your skill set. Other than that, is there anybody in this audience that could not jump on a treadmill with a pogo stick? How high a level is that skill set? To jump on a treadmill with a pogo stick. That is pretty stupid, dude. <laughs> That's coming from me. <laughs> what? Crazy Mike. You're crazy Mike. That's that's what we do, though. Yeah, what do you think about this, Mike? Uh, yeah, I don't like getting hurt, man. It's your story, dude. I feel for it, man. And um, I'm sorry you guys had to go through that. You know, but it's like watching that kid's Tristan's videos. Like, he's taking a skateboard into a wall. 
you're gonna get hurt. You know, I'm not trying to be part of that. I'm trying to do stunt successfully. You know, this is where I get my adrenaline rush, but I don't have a chance of getting hurt. Like, you're taking something, you're going into the skateboard, running into a wall, you're getting hurt. Like he was saying, there's no way out of it. You know, that's self mutilation. Like, you want to get hurt. And I'm not, I'm not doing that. And I'm not, I'm against that, actually. That's why I don't even like those clips. Stapling yourself? Come on, man. Like, that's, yeah. I'm with you on that. I agree with you on that. Yeah, even you think that's stupid. Yeah, I think that's stupid. I think that's stupid. There's a problem there, you know? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I just have to I say this. Just, just, I, I hate it when I sound like a shrink, but let me, let me just say this to you parents. They do it because it's dangerous. 